Hi there, Jonathan Leipzig uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia, just coming to you to share some thoughts about the role of cardiac CT for structural heart disease, in particular for transcatheter heart valve interventions. Um, you know, as we look as a primer for interventional cardiologists, I'm really honored to be sharing some thoughts, having sort of borne witness the evolution of, of cardiac CT as it relates to transcatheter aortic valve replacement, having witnessed its integration now uh, to help guide TAVR, but also to help guide other transcatheter valvular interventions. As I teach my fellows, I always remind them that CT is a tool that should be used when considering an anatomical question. There's frankly no better non-invasive anatomical tool than CT. It informs uh, anatomical decisions in a profoundly powerful and transparent and clear way. As it relates to transcatheter heart valve interventions, the role of CT is clear. It defines the landing zone to help avoid uh, leak and, uh, and, uh, and to ensure capture, to optimize sizing depending on the radial force of the device, as well as to characterize not only the annular landing zone, but the periannular landing zone to understand potential risks of complications. CT is also an elegant tool for the planning of interventions beyond the annulus, uh, whether it's the aortic mitral or tricuspid, understanding the relationship of the annulus with uh, anatomical structures such as the left ventricular alpha tract, the coronary arteries in the setting of TAPR, or the right coronary artery as it relates to transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement. We've also seen growing integration of CT uh, as it relates to fluoroscopic guidance, providing fluoroscopic angulation in advance of the procedure, understanding how to optima, optimize deployment uh, and avoid uh, unnecessary deep deployments uh, using uh, parallax and a so-called double S curve, and also understanding access to the left ventricular apex as it relates to transcatheter mitral valve interventions, optimally providing fluoroscopic guidance and really supporting the procedure. Finally, as it relates to complications, I think what we've seen across all of the valvular uh, spaces is that CT is really elegant in identifying patients at risk of, of complications related to transcatheter valve intervention. Whether it's annular rupture related to subannular calcium in the aortic valve, uh, whether it's related to neo-LVOT obstruction, related to geometry of the left ventricle in the setting of transcatheter mitral valve replacement, or on the tricuspid side, CT really provides a clear understanding of the potential uh, anatomical uh, risk of a transcatheter valve intervention. Now, clearly CT has limitations. It has to be performed thoughtfully and, and optimally to, to answer the clinical questions at hand. And it doesn't provide um, measures of hemodynamics or gradients. But as it relates to an anatomical test, its role is, uh, or its, its potential and its uh, contributions to decision making are unparalleled. And the opportunities going forward through the integration of AI and machine learning to extract more information from CT is growing even further. The ability to routinely quantify ventricular and atrial volumes, the ability to uh, extract measures of strain uh, and extracellular volume, all of these things uh, we are on the uh, cusp of. And so I think the future of cardiac CT as it relates to transcatheter heart valve interventions is bright and continues to grow. I look forward to bearing witness the coming 10 years to see uh, further improvements uh, in procedural planning and further and deeper integration of CT into these uh, procedures uh, going forward. Thank you again. Hi, I'm Eric Williamson, past president of the Society for Cardiovascular CT. Thanks very much for taking the time to view this video from SCCT's Referring Physician Series regarding the appropriate application of cardiac CT. I hope you found it helpful for your specific practice as well as for your patients. Please join us for other lectures from this six-part series. I'm confident they will be equally as enlightening. See you then.